everybody, I'm Ron Cantor and you're watching Out of Zion on God TV. Yesterday we shared about the amazing revelation that the Dead Sea Scrolls revealed that contrary to what many rabbis claim today, first century Judaism expected the Messiah to suffer for the nation. Now let's speed up 2,000 years, the story gets even better. Right behind me, a Bedouin shepherd discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls by accident in 1947. Now I imagine when the Qumran Jewish community hid them as Jerusalem was about to be destroyed by the Romans, they wondered who would find them. What they didn't know, not the shepherd nor the Essene Jews, was that God had planned it out from the beginning. In late 1947, the United Nations was set to vote on what was called partition. They would take the remaining 20% of the land that Great Britain had promised to the Jewish people in the Balfour Declaration in 1917, 80% had already been given to the Arabs to make Jordan, and create another state for the Arabs and one tiny state for the Jews. By the way, if anyone ever tells you that there needs to be a homeland for Palestinian Arabs, you can tell them that it was created in 1921 and it's called Jordan. Anyway, the vote was set for November 29th. Getting back to the scrolls, the shepherd had no idea what he had stumbled upon. He's put in touch with an antiquities dealer by the name of Kondo in Jerusalem. A Hebrew University professor by the name of Eliezer Zucanus hears about this and he's intrigued. Risking his life because of the Jewish Arab tensions at the time, he arranges a meeting with Kondo, and after a brief inspection, he goes to Bethlehem to see the other scrolls. He is overwhelmed as he realizes what he might be reading. My hand shook as I started to unwrap one of them. I read a few sentences. It was written in beautiful biblical Hebrew. The language was like that of the Psalms, but the text was unknown to me. I looked and looked and I suddenly had the feeling that I was privileged by destiny to gaze upon a Hebrew scroll which had not been read for more than 2,000 years. After some negotiation, he leaves with the scrolls. He catches the bus back to Jerusalem. He's surrounded by Arabs and he's quite nervous. Would he actually ever get home with his precious cargo? Yes, and as soon as he arrived home, he poured over the scrolls, only becoming more convinced of his historic discovery. And here's where it just gets crazy. I'm gonna quote the professor. While I was examining these precious documents in my study, the late news on the radio announced that the United Nations would be voting on the resolution that night, whether or not Israel would be allowed to become a nation. My youngest son, Mati, was in the next room twiddling radio knobs in an effort to get New York. From time to time, he would give me a brief commentary on what had been said. It was past midnight when the voting was announced, and I was engrossed in a particularly absorbing passage in one of the scrolls when my son rushed in with the shout that the vote on the Jewish state had passed. This great event in Jewish history was thus combined in my home in Jerusalem with another event no less historic, the one political and the other cultural. The timing of this is clearly prophetic. The scrolls remained hidden for nearly 2,000 years for anyone to find. And on the very day, the very day that Israel's rebirth was confirmed, a Jewish professor confirms the existence of ancient Israel. You're really going to have to be intellectually dishonest if you're going to claim that God was not behind Israel's dramatic rebirth. Make sure you go to God.tv so you never miss an episode, and you can find me at roncantor.com. Shalom. Please follow Ron on Twitter and Facebook at Ron S. Cantor to find out more about Ron and his ministry. For more information on God TV and the Out of Zion programs, or to view these programs again, go to God.tv forward slash Zion.